In this video, I will show you how to install the latest version of the Oracle Database Express Edition. So let's type Oracle. Now let's click on this first link. Then here let's click on Products. Then Oracle Databases. Now let's scroll down and let's click on this Download button. Now let's scroll down. And let's click on this link, Oracle Database Express Edition. So here to install this Oracle Database Express Edition, we can follow the documentation at this link, Installation Guide for Windows. So I will follow this documentation to show you how to install this Express Edition. So to download the installer, we have just to click on this link. Now we have to accept the license, then let's click on this button. So to download this installer, we should have an account. So if you don't have an account, you can create a new account for free. In my case, I have already an account, so I will use this account to download this installer. Now I can save this file on my computer, but in my case, I have already downloaded it. So I will cancel this download and I will use the zip file that I have already downloaded, which is this one. Now all what I have to do is to extract this file. So I will extract it into a folder that has the same name as the zip file. So this is the obtained folder. I have just to open it. And inside this folder I have to find the setup file which is this one and let's run it. So in this window we have just to click next, then we have to accept the license, then let's click next. So here we can install Oracle Database at this path, but in my case I want to modify it, so I will click on change. Then here I will just create a new folder on the C drive called Oracle XE18C. Now let's click on OK. Then let's click next. So here I have to provide the password for these three accounts. So the password uh, that I will provide is just password. Now let's click next. So these are the parameters that will be applied to this installation. Now let's click install. In this window, I have just to allow this application to access the network. So let's click on Allow Access. Now the installation finished successfully and this window shows the connection information. So Oracle Database defines two types of databases, the container database called CDB and the pluggable database called PDB. So here we can see that the CDB is accessible at this address and the PDB is accessible at this address. So the CDB can contain multiple PDBs and what is called database in Oracle Database is not the same as a database in other database servers like MySQL and SQL Server. So what is called database in MySQL and SQL Server is called schema in Oracle Database. And we can create a schema in the PDB, like XE PDB in this example, but we cannot create a schema in the CDB. Also, to create a new schema, we need to create a new user because every user has a schema. Now, let's click on the Finish button to close this window. And also, we can delete this folder. Now, let's open the command prompt to test the connection with the server. And in this window, I will use the SQL Plus tool, which has been installed with the Oracle Database, to connect to the server. So let's type the following command. So here, system is the user account, which is a default user account that has been created. This is the password that I defined during the installation. 
and this address allows me to connect to the CDB. Now let's hit enter. Now we are connected to the CDB. So let's take a look on the available PDBs using the following command. And here, as you can see, we have this default PDB that has been created during the installation. And this is not a PDB. It is just a template that allows us to create easily a new PDB. Now let's type the exit command to close the connection with the CDB and let's connect to the PDB. So this command allows us to connect as the system user using this password and this address is the address of the default PDB. Now let's hit enter. Now let's take a look on the available users, which means that we will take a look also on the available schema because I said that every user has a schema. So let's type the following command. And as you can see, we have this number of users that already exists. Now let's create a new user using this command. So I will create a new user called boost my tool which uses this password. So let's hit enter. And also I need to define the privileges of this user. So let's use the following command. So here I will provide this user with all the privileges. So let's hit enter. Now let's close the connection as system and let's log in again as the new user. So let's type exit. And let's type the following command. So this is the new user, this is the password, and this is the address of the PDB where we created the new user and its schema. So let's hit enter. Now let's create a new table into this schema. And let's add a new row into this table. Now let's select all the rows of this table. And as you can see, this is the user that we have added and this is its email address. Now let's close this connection using the exit command. And let's close this window. Now it is possible to install a tool called SQL Developer which is free which allows us to manage our database using a user interface. So let's go to the navigator and here let's type SQL Developer. Now let's go to this first link. Then in this page let's click on this button SQL Developer. Now in this window I will just download SQL Developer for Windows which includes the GDK. So let's click on this button. And of course we need to accept the license. Now let's click on download. Now we can save this zip file on the computer but in my case I have already downloaded it so I will cancel this download and I will use the zip file that I have downloaded which is this one. Now let's extract it. So I will extract it directly on the user of this computer. So I will remove this part from the path. Now let's click on OK. Now let's go to the location where I extracted the zip file. So it is extracted in the folder of the user of this computer in a folder called SQL Developer. And here we need just to make a shortcut of this executable file on the computer which allows us to start SQL Developer easily. So let's do this. Now we can close this folder and we can use this shortcut to start SQL Developer. So let's start it. In this window let's just click on No. In this window, I will just create a new connection to the database. So I will create a new connection using this button. And in this window, I have just to provide the name of the connection. So let's call it conpdb. 
So this connection allows us to connect to the PDB and the only PDB that we have is called XEPDB. So we have to provide the username. We can connect with the default user system. And of course, with the password that we defined during the installation, which is password. So as I said, this is a connection with the PDB. So we have to select service name and to provide the name of the PDB. Of course, I did not modify the port number. So this is the port number to connect to the PDB. And this is the host name. Now we can test this connection using this button. And as you can see, the connection is successful. So let's connect. And as you can see, this is a new connection that has been created. So we can expand it. And if we scroll down, we can see other users, which contains the list of the available users. So let's expand this. And here we can see this user, which is the user that I have created using SQL plus. Now let's connect as this user. So I will just close this and I will create a new connection as the new user. So I will call it con boost my tool. So here the username is the username that I created, which is boost my tool. And the password is just password. So we have to connect to this host name at this port number. And of course, we have to connect to the PDB, which is called XEPDB1. Now let's click on test to test this connection. And as you can see, the connection is successful. So let's connect. Now the new connection has been created. So let's expand it and let's expand tables. And here we can find the table that I have created. So if I click on data, I can see the available data into this table. Finally, thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to the channel.